Welcome back! It has been a while. It's It's been a while. Been a while. And when I say a while, I mean at least a week and a half because guess who finally finished her wholesale order? This girl right here! Woo! Today is my arch nemesis. The sugared strawberry soap. And why is the sugared strawberry soap my arch nemesis? And it's really boils down to one thing. I cannot for the life of there's <laughs> he there's writing on my arm. See, you know you're a soap maker when you have your recipe written on your arm, you know. Same thing with musicians. Musicians like lyrics and we write our recipes. Anyway, the reason why it is my arch nemesis is because I cannot find a fragrance oil that actually smells like strawberry. See, now I don't mind having a sugary smell, which is why I call mine sugared strawberry because it's not that straight strawberry. So I don't mind having kind of a yum yum strawberry milkshake fragrance, but it always turns, it always morphs to some degree into something else that isn't really strawberry at all, or it fades, which is pretty much the worst. So. We're trying a new fragrance oil, and I'm going to try to beat it this time. This is also a melt and pour loves cold process, which means I am pouring hot melt and pour into my regular cold process soap. I've had a lot of requests for this. Again, uh, lots of people wondering how I do this, how you're supposed to, you know, keep it from overheating and such, and all of those will be included in my video. That was a rant, and I'm terribly sorry about it, but we are starting now. Yeehaw! I apologize in advance for the banging of the shed doors. There's really nothing I can do about that at this time. So there's that. And then here is my melt and pour. Uh, my, my molds hold 60 ounces of oil. And so 20, yeah, 60 ounces of oil. So in here is 20 ounces of melt and pour, 10 ounces for each one. So my batch is of 100 oils because it can hold 60 each. So essentially, I just took 20 uh, ounces of the oils and turned them into melt and pour. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up my aloe vera, uh, coconut milk, uh, lye, and bamboo silk solution, and pour it in with my oils and my kaolin clay. It's going to have three different colors in it. It's going to have this red that I've made over here. It's going to have pink and white. I'm now going to pour this into two buckets. Here one, and here the other. And this is going to be my white. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off real quick and I'm going to scrape the bucket. Scrapey, scrapey. And then I'll be back and I'll show you mixing up my colors. Into this first one is going white. Just mix this up. Mix that real good. I really don't know if this fragrance is going to discolor or not, but I am making it so that it really doesn't matter if it discolors. There's the rest of my white. And now for the pink. And for the pink, I am doing some Cosmic Carolyn from TKBTrading.com. And I will be doing one teaspoon of pink vibrance mica. I did not measure the Cosmic Carolyn, but that's about a teaspoon and a fourth, I would say, in pink vibrance mica, which I've never used before. So this is my testing for that. And to lighten it up just a tad, I'm going to add some of my white. In here just a little bit there we go that's a good strawberry color now I've mixed those up so I'm going to add into this white um, if I can find it then again maybe not 
I was going to add some red jojoba beads. Ah, ha, ha. Here we go. Red jojoba beads into here. And I'm just going to mix that up with one of the spoons I had set aside. Not very many, just a few. Oh, you are so nice to me. My brother just brought me green tea. Isn't he kind? Thank you, brother. Okay, that's enough with the mixing, I do believe. There are my three colors. Now I'm going to measure out this strawberry fragrance oil. I'm going to mix this up with a spoon and I'll come back because y'all don't want to watch that. That's boring. Alrighty, I have mixed everything up. So, as you can see, I have not gotten the clippies yet that I was supposed to have gotten last week. <laughs> but that happens sometimes. My white's getting pretty thick here. I probably need to uh, put a whisk through it. Okay. There's a little bit of white in each one. Just gonna shake this around. Woo! Okay. Now for the melting pour, which I'm going to be pouring from up high. Mmm, this fragrance smells so good. Oh my gosh. Seriously, this, this is definitely, definitely my favorite so far. And it's acted really pretty too. If this doesn't discolor and actually holds the fragrance, I will be in fragrance oil heaven. So I'm just kind of pouring this in randomly, as you can probably see. This looks so good. It's like a dessert. Mm, mm, mm. I don't want to move the red melt and pour too much, but I find that it pretty much always happens. And since I'm going to be taking a hanger through it anyway, it's not that big a deal. I'll put more on the top. Okay, so here I am pouring melt and pour from up high again. Mm. Another thing about adding melt and pour to cold process soap is that I find that melt and pour holds fragrances better. So if you mix a little fragrance in there, it'll probably end up smelling stronger through your soap. Alright, so it's time to stick the hanger through. I'm just going to be moving it around. This is not a specific hanger swirl. This is just to kind of mix it up. Okay, I'm not even going to clean it off. Okay. In fact, you might not even be able to tell that I put a hanger through it. There's the base is done. Also, just so you know, if I have one that has less in it than the other one, it's a pretty easy fix. All I do is I take some of my piping and I fill up that end a little bit more so that they all end up weighing the same. So I'm going to mix up my piping and then I will go ahead and pipe the tops. I have put a line of white down and I also poured when the piping was still thin. I filled in all of the cracks and made it nice and white and smooth on top and then I put the, the line down. So I'm just going to put one on either side. Just fill in where the line isn't. Now I've mixed up my melt and pour with the two micas that I previously used. It's still relatively hot. Um, that's okay. Like I said, we're going to kind of fill in the cracks with this. Next, I'm doing the white again. And this time I'm going to mound it up a little more right here in the middle. As you can see, I've had time for it to really thicken up. Woo! These are so cool! They're so pretty! 
And I know it probably sounds super vain for me to be always saying, Wow, my soups are just gorgeous, aren't they? Would you look at what I've done? <laughs> but in reality, I end up kind of surprising myself every time. Because, like I've said a million times, every soap is different. Um, every batch is different. So I'm just as surprised and impressed as you guys are sometimes that stuff turns out the way it does because honestly it feels like I'm not even making it. It kind of feels like it's just making itself and I'm just watching it happen. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I know I'm such a weirdo. Here are my melting pour embeds. These can go on now. Actually, this is still a little bit soft, and I want it to stay straight, so I'm going to wait a little while until that thickens up for me to put the rest of them on. I put the strawberries on and then sprinkled a little bit more red glitter. So this is what they look like when they're all finished. Yum, yum, yum. Hello, good morning everyone, and we're back. As you can see, it has turned out quite nicely, especially on the edges. Whenever I cut edges, I'm always concerned about giving it to people. However, when I do a melt and pour uh, plus cold process soap, I always like giving the edges away because they always have a more melt and pour than the middle does because the weight of the cold process pushes it to the edge. So let's see what it looks like inside. Ooh boy. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, and the smell, because you know I was testing a new fragrance with this, so, it's so good. It's so good. I think I might have found my winner. I had Mama smell it, and she said it smelled really good. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we found the one we're going to keep, which, hooray! So exciting when that happens. And um, as you know also, I have a bud cutter and they say don't cut melt and pour with that, but whenever you mix melt and pour with cold process, I don't think that's what they mean. I think they're saying like if you make melt and pour soap loaves, uh, don't do that. But you know I'm not doing those. <laughs> I really like the glitter on top too. The glitter I also got from TKB Trading. If anyone is wondering, TKB Trading is exactly what I said it is dot com. And they have lots of cool glitters and micas and such. I get quite a few colors from there. Ooh la la! Mmm, there's a big red strawberry like thing. It's seriously, I hope the scent doesn't fade because this smells just way too good. Way too good. Thank you everyone so much for watching Royalty Soaps. I hope everyone enjoyed the video and will join me next time. By the way, that is the Pink Vibrance Mica mixed with Cosmic Carolyn, and it's really, really beautiful pink. I 100% approve. And so, until the next video, I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.